Notice the others have this middle hook in the bottom of the bait, but this one, it's on the side. And I asked Michael about that. He said he actually rigged them up like this way because it will walk, and then it, when you pause it, it just rolls over. Just a little bit of extra movement at the end of a twitch. So that is pretty cool. You can imagine walking this bait, you pause it, boom, boom. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Uh, <laughs> probably a record for the shortest stop I've ever made at Bacon's Tackle. Man, every time I come I say it, but I could totally spend a couple days here. Uh, huge shout out to Michael Bacon for making my uh, trip to Shreveport <laughs> really awesome uh, last night through this morning. So we're gonna get back on the road and start heading east again. Whew. Next stop, Monroe, Louisiana. long day on the road. Whew, man. <laughs> Just pulling in to Forney, Alabama after a uh, pretty grueling trip from Shreveport, Louisiana. Stayed at Michael Bacon's a little bit too long, but as usual, not nearly as long as I wanted to. And kind of boogied my way down here to the coast as quick as I could. I was hoping to make it to Florida tonight. Unfortunately, that just did not happen. Uh, wasn't in the cards, but uh, I think I've got about six and a half hours on the road tomorrow to get to Fernandina Beach, the ultimate final destination of this little retro road show. Ah. <laughs> what a day of bacons we had. So, before we crash the night, I do want to run through some of the things that we got at Michael Bacon's. It was a little bit of a mad dash to get out of there, to be honest with you. Uh, spent a lot of time with Michael souping up some of the lures that I brought. But being this might be my last trip to Bacon's in, uh, we'll say a little bit, I definitely wanted to peruse the tackle section and grab some stuff. So I did that off camera because honestly, I just had to get on the road. So I will show you guys what I picked up at Bacon's and also give you a close look at some of the cool bacon spades that we got. <laughs> what a day. Oh my goodness. How's the light, by the way? Is it, it's all right? It's not here. Let's see. Every time I go to Bacon's, I swear, I feel like I could spend a couple of days there. In fact, there were sort of parts of the shop that I had hoped to get to today that unfortunately I did not. So. I guess the good news is there's always something left to do when I get back to Shreveport. So I will show you guys some of the stuff that I picked up from Bacon's. Ah, just, what a trip. <laughs> Talking about worm bar systems that Michael Bacon and Cotton Cordell did, it's a pretty wild thing where they would literally sell plastics by the pound. So I saw these lying in the uh, one of the front bins and I totally scooped up about 10 of them. Check it out, that is a pretty sweet imitation pork rind. Almost the exact same shape as an actual pork rind, but in a nice white. Talking to my new bass and bud, uh, Charlie, over at Tuglia's Tackle, he was saying that he threads these chunks up so that they skip really well. And looking at this white, I've got some white jigs that, man, that could be a little killer skipping around some boat docks. So
So I grabbed eh, about 10 of those guys. It's kind of an impulse buy. <laughs> so this pack has three worms in it, but three very unique, very cool worms. This was just hanging out here. That is a Riverside Lowers Top Gun soft plastic jerkbait and sort of a pumpkin color. That's actually a pretty sweet one. A tough to find soft plastic bait that I like a lot. I only saw one in the pack or in the box and I got it. Also saw one of these hanging out. And this is a Burke Buckshot Worm. Back in the day when everyone else had a straight tail worm, but this is a pretty cool one in a segmented body that you can actually pinch off these uh, buckshots to make it any kind of length that you want. And last but not least, I saw one lone Old Ben's goober tail worm. Yep, that is a little peanut. This was Michael Bacon's father's company, and that might be the last worm in Shreveport that we scooped up. So three worms. <laughs> well, you can't talk about Louisiana Lure Companies without mentioning Bill Lewis, or as I learned, Red River Lure Company. And Michael has a pretty extensive selection of some old school Bill Lewis lures in the old plastic package. But check that out. A nice red zone. This is the suspending version of the rattle trap, and one of my favorite ones, actually. This is a really cool, cool bait to fish. I have had really good luck with this thing on chain pickerel in the winter and fall, and I got a feeling that I could catch a bass. So I picked up five of those. Some of these are gonna be for collecting, ultimate display at some point, and I'm definitely gonna pop open a few to do a little fishing. So one, two, Three, four, yeah, five of those guys. What else, what else, what else? <laughs> One of the coolest things about bacons is the fact that there are just crates and crates and boxes and boxes of loose, hookless rattle traps. You can buy these by the five or the ten, you get a heck of a deal for them. And the story is a few years ago, Michael purchased I think it was like 16,000 pounds of rattle traps from Bill Lewis. So here are a few of the unique ones I picked up today. I hadn't seen that one before, look at that. It's almost sort of like a, either a pearl or a glow with a nice blue stripe. Picked up this one which is a ghost in a nice blue. A little quarter ounce ghost. Again, my recent trip to Pukli has got me thinking about some smaller crankbaits that I probably don't fish nearly enough and that's a nice little size. Also got a few of them in this nice little uh, blue shad. And last but not least, one of my favorite saltwater colors, this reflective green. This is actually a tough color. At least it was till I got to Bacon's. And I used to throw this thing a pretty good bit on the old Severn River for striped bass, so I love that color. Maybe it's just me, but I just like a green bait. So those are the uh, rattle traps that I picked up. And at some point, I'm gonna get some hooks on these guys and do a little casting. You see, I was like productive after you guys uh, left. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Recent bait that I picked up a long time ago at Bacon's was this thing, and I only found an ad, I think it was on eBay, describing what it was. And this is an old Bass Buster schooling fish bait. I picked up, I think, another half dozen of these. Michael put in a line tie for me, and at some point we get the old Retro Bass in a tackle store online going. I'm gonna have a few of these things souped up and I will put those guys up for sale. But this is a pretty sweet schooling fish bait. I feel like this thing weighs about an ounce and a half or two ounces. So this thing will cast an absolute country mile. 
Also found just among the bins and bins of loose rattle traps, <laughs> a little hookless near nothing, just hanging out. <laughs> so Michael is nice enough to soup that thing up with a couple of hooks, and we've got a, another nice near nothing caster. A pretty sweet feather tail. What else do we have from bacon? Man, it was a crazy day. <laughs> I saw this just sitting there. I had to pick it up. It is a Bill Lewis Lures, Alexandria, Louisiana dealer box. And inside are six Bill Lewis rattle traps. I think most are of this pretty glorious ghost variety in a very nice translucent purple. So it looks like there's a ghost purple, another ghost purple, sort of a ghost tequila sunrise. It doesn't say ghost on it. Red ghost. Another red ghost. And last but not least, one more purple. So super cool dealer box. Obviously this probably got rearranged over the years, but I am most likely to keep this box together as is. And maybe I'll line up those three purple ghosts so it looks a little more uh, dealer box-ish. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, we brought a number of lures for Michael to soup up for us, and man, just did absolute pro work on those. Here is a Whopper Stopper sent to us from John and Lindy at Small Water Chargers. Rig that sucker up with a couple of nice treble hooks. We've got this unidentified bait, and drop a comment in the comment section below if you have any idea what this is. We were figuring it's either a Shakespeare or a Paul Paul. I was even thinking it might be a creek chub, but nice little crankbait, and we just threw a single treble on the back in addition to this double hook. But the uh, real showpiece that we got from our friends at Small Water Charters were some of these Jim Pfeffer minnows. And these were definitely fishers. This one was missing two hooks and a propeller, so Michael was nice enough to soup this thing up with the actual Pfeffer propeller too. So this is gonna be a Fisher. Next time I get down to the old headwater slash donkey land area with John and Lindia, our mission is to catch a fish on this guy. And also this one, which is, oh, just a gorgeous looking bait. This one had two front hooks. It was missing the rear hook and the spinner. And there we go. That is an awesome looking bait. What else do we have? Oh, okay. <laughs> so here was the impulse uh, buy that I got at the end of the day. Bacon's Bullfrog Baits. These are baits that Michael Bacon makes himself. Not only does he carve the wood on a lathe, but he has actual frog skin that he pulls across these baits. So I've got a couple in here. I'll show you the first one here. This one is called Tadpole. And look at that sweet little bait. I think at some point Smithwick probably had a bait similar to this, but this is just a nice little almost one inch propeller topwater. <laughs> that thing is cute, but I guarantee you they could catch a bass. And here is one that I saw. Let's see what it's labeled as. Uh, this says Smithwick Weedless. I think this is called a Jingle Bob or something like that. But it is a bacon bait that he carved and made in the <laughs> sort of mold of an old Smithwick bait. I actually saw this bait at Bacon's last time I was here, which at this point was probably like close to two years ago. Amazingly, it was still sitting there in his display case, so I absolutely had to grab it. It looks sort of like a devil's horse profile, 
but it's got this very unique hanger that has a single hook, but also this blade. And you can see the way the single hook goes up here. So this is some sort of weedless walking bait. You know, a fish would probably have to hit this pretty good to get a hook in it, not a ton of gap right there. But just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. What does it say here in gold? Genuine bacon frog skin. And all his baits are also signed by Michael Bacon. It's kind of hard to see, but it's got a pretty sweet gold pen. So what a good looking bait. I cannot wait to throw that one. But one of the <laughs> main reasons I took this little detour to a Shreveport in addition to hanging out with uh, a good friend of mine was this. Last time I was at Bacon's, he showed me a ultra top secret never released lure from Smithwick that he named the Rolls Royce. It was originally going to be a Smithwick bait prior to the Pradco acquisition. However, once Pradco purchased Smithwick, this bait fell by the wayside. He had a few in production and I just had to have one. I ended up with three of them. So here is that gorgeous bait, which Michael calls the Rolls Royce. From this angle, it looks a whole lot like a Smithwick Devil's Horse, the bigger size. But if you look at the bottom, it's got that keel on it. And this thing is gonna be a walk-in machine. It's got a nice little tail weight there. This one is in a, probably a chickapin perch color. <laughs> oh man. He also sent me this one, which is probably one of my favorite colors of all time. A spotted ape Rolls Royce. It's got the Rolls Royce right there. And this one, which has an extremely unique hook hanger. Notice the others have this middle hook in the bottom of the bait, but this one, it's on the side. And I asked Michael about that. He said he actually rigged them up like this way because it will walk, and then it, when you pause it, it just rolls over. Just a little bit of extra movement at the end of a twitch. So that is pretty cool. You can imagine walking this bait, you pause it, boom, boom. <laughs> Uh, I cannot wait to throw these guys. So super excited that I ended up, I wanted to go there and get one Rolls Royce and I ended up with three of them. By the way, if you guys are interested in any of these bacon space, man, they are definitely worth the price of admission. There's one caveat, he does not ship. So you've got to get yourself to Shreveport, Louisiana, which if we ever do a retro bass and tackle tour, it would be probably be the number one place on there. So I don't care where you are in the country, if you ever have a chance to get to Bacon's, spend a day or two there, uh, maybe stay at Michael Bacon's Airbnb, and you're gonna be blown away. It's probably better than the IGFA Hall of Fame. Just what a, what a cool, cool place. So those are the Bacon's original baits that we got from Michael. In addition to those baits, I wanted to go there and get some of my many spinner baits re-skirted. I didn't know this before I met Michael, but at one point he said that his family's company, Old Ben's, made about 90% of the latex tube skirts used in almost every major manufacturer, from Strike King to Fred Arbogast to H&H. &H. So Michael doesn't make these anymore. However, he's got a number of tube skirts lying around from days gone past and some in just some crazy, crazy colors, including this old school blue, which you don't see a whole lot in spinner baits anymore. It's pretty glorious green. And just a bunch of really weird oddball colors. Green and orange, purple and pink. Oh man. White and yellow, not chartreuse and a nice blue and white. So I'm gonna go ahead and rig up some of these uh, skirts that I've got on some of the different spinner baits. I cannot wait to see how that goes. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.